Places in our midst. Good morning. I guess that camera I never stayed here. <laughs> I feel like you guys are so far away. <laughs> it's been a while since I served, so it's uh, really, really a blessing to be up here and be with all of you. So thank you for being here. Today's gospel lesson is the story of the rich young man. And it poses a serious challenge to each and every one of us. And uh, if we take the story seriously, I find it to be very disturbing in many ways. This young man who came to the Lord was rich. In all probability, he was seen as a righteous man, a man of integrity and morality. When he asked what he must do to inherit eternal life, the Lord gives several of the commandments. And he says, I've kept them all. And I don't think he was lying. He was probably did keep all those commandments. If anybody would have seen him, they would have thought, here was a man of integrity. And I would guess he may have been a leader in the synagogue, in his hometown. He was that kind of person. Yet there was something inside that was lacking. How do we know that? Well, he comes to the Lord. He comes to Jesus and he says, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He says he's been keeping the precepts of the Decalogue, of the Torah. And yet, something was lacking. And he comes to Jesus, recognizing that this young prophet had something to tell him, something he needed. And so he comes and he asks what he must do. And the Lord gives several of the commandments, lists them out. And he says, I've kept all of those. Now, despite his uprightness, something was lacking. So he came to Jesus, asking what he must do. And Jesus zeroed in on that young man's problem. Notice that there was one commandment of the ten that he did not, Jesus did not mention to him. And that was, you shall not covet. You shall not desire that which belongs to others. Z Jesus zeroed in on his own problem there and he said, give up everything. All the riches that you have, give them up. And follow me. Give them up for the kingdom. The scriptures say, to whom much is given, much will be required. And the young man, we're told, walked away sadly because, he's, we're told, he had many riches. Now, why is it, well, the Lord went on to say, it's harder for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God than for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. Now, why is that? Why is it harder for a rich man to enter the kingdom than for a camel to go through the eye of a needle? Well, I think it's because riches shackle our thoughts to this earth. Riches shack our thoughts to the things around us, materiality, a divert us from God's kingdom. That rich young man did feel a lack in his spiritual life. And despite his righteousness, his keeping of most of the commandments, he can honestly say he kept them all, but there was that one command that he, Jesus didn't bring up. And I think it's because he knew what this man's problem was. So he zeroed in on that and he says, give it all up. All those riches, give it all up, and come to the kingdom, God's reign, and follow me. Too many riches here shackle our thoughts to this earth and prevent us from being ready to sacrifice all for the kingdom of God. That's why it's harder for a rich man to enter the kingdom than for a camel to go through the eye of a needle, because riches shackle our thoughts to this earth. Now, obviously, none of us here today are overly wealthy, it seems to me. But we're all living in one of the richest societies on earth, aren't we? America is one of the most materialistic nations in all the world, and all her citizens, including we Christians, are often tempted to think that all that matters is the material things that are so abundant in our culture. We are beguiled into thinking that all this material wealth around us, both that which is in our hands and that which is in the culture around us that we benefit from indirectly, that all of that is what matters. But when our Lord calls us to come, he calls for all of us. And he asks for everything to be given to his control. To let him control our finances, our social life, everything. It's so easy, it seems to me, so tempting, to survey our riches, our dreams, our success, our social prestige. And when a push comes to shove, we have to sadly turn away when our Lord asks for everything. And he will ask for everything. We may not, he may not ask each, each of us to give up all our material possessions. 
But at least here we have to give them up. We have to give them up for the kingdom, to put whatever we have, our dreams, our plans, whatever it might be, aside when we see what God's will is, and it doesn't coincide with those plans, or those dreams, or those riches. We must be willing to give them up for the kingdom, to live simply, to hold lightly the great material blessings which we enjoy in this country. Because if we don't, we like the rich young man are bound to turn away sadly and say, I just can't do it. There's a second reason why it's harder for a rich man to enter God's kingdom than for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. Not only because riches shackle our thoughts to this earth, but also because riches cut us off from our needy brethren around us. The Lord tells us in Matthew 19, love your neighbor as yourself. The rich man's wealth allowed him to live in circles where nobody was in need. He was able to live in circles where everybody had most of what they needed. And so he was blind. Because of his riches, he was blinded to the needs of those, even in his own community, who were in need. Our plenty in this nation tends to make us forget that others are in want, even in our communities, especially at this time, after the COVID thing and the lockdowns and people unemployed, and people in need. But if we have all that we need, we tend to not be in those circles, don't we? But we'll see them on the street corners with their signs. We see the needs all around us, maybe even in the congregation. But we're blinded to them often because we're so living in the midst of people that have all that we want and all that we need. Our many blessings are a great responsibility. They're not simply blessings. We are indeed our brother's keepers, and we are responsible for sharing these great blessings which God has put into our hands as Americans with others. For only in so doing can we follow our Lord himself who gave up everything, all of his riches and glory, in his heavenly glory, gave them all up to become a slave in the Roman Empire, to become one of us in our lowliness, in our mortality, to enter into all that we possess and all that we live and all, even our death so that he might make it all holy and bring it to God his Father. He gave it all up for the sake of the kingdom of God that he proclaimed. That's what we need to do as well. Finally, there's a third reason why it's harder for a rich man to enter the kingdom than for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. Not only because riches shackle our thoughts to things of this age. Not only because they cut us off from our needy brethren but also because riches can lead us into deeper, deeper sin. St. Paul tells us in 1 Timothy, the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people, eager for money, have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. That's a warning to all of us, it seems to me, in our Christian law, because we do have so much. And if we are allowing ourselves to love all those material things, more than the kingdom, then we are going to fall into deeper sin. When we accumulate riches, we place ourselves in a dangerous position. For when we become preoccupied with material things, we forget that which is of first importance, which is what St. Paul talked about in today's epistle. That is the kingdom of God, the gospel, the good news that Jesus is Lord, that he has come, he died, he was buried, he rose, he appeared, and he appears to us today and comes among us today. That's what's of first importance, our relationship with our crucified, risen, ascended, and glorified Lord, who is coming again. With many riches, it's so easy to allow ourselves to become preoccupied with those riches and not with the kingdom of God. And that's why I find this incident of the rich young man to be very disturbing. We live in a materialistic culture which bids us to cling to our material possessions and to get more and more and more and social prestige, as if they were gods. The temptation's all around us. Brothers and sisters, the test is on. But let us grab onto that which is of first importance, which is our relationship with our Lord, his kingdom, his reign, so that when he calls us, as he did that rich young man, to give up everything for the kingdom, we can say with Peter, Lord, we have left everything to follow you. For that, if we do that, we will find out the true treasure, which is the kingdom of God.
to the glory of our God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and ages of ages. Amen. Christ is in our midst. He is in our midst.